right, welcome out to the range. No, you haven't won a prize. Unfortunately, people are still scamming people. So today we're gonna do a comparison between 44 Magnum and 41 Magnum. It's not gonna be a perfect comparison. We can't get the exact same bullet weights, although we got close today, and we can't get the two same exact guns, at least I don't have them. So what we have in 44 Magnum is a Smith & Wesson 629, be careful not to flag myself, that way is downrange. Six inch barrel with the 44 Magnum, sorry. What we're shooting out of it today is Hornady Custom 44 Mag 200 grain XTP that the box says coming out at the muzzle is 1500 feet per second. The 41 Magnum is a Ruger Blackhawk, sorry, with a six and a half inch barrel, single action versus double action. And the rounds we have for it today are 41 Magnum Hornady Custom 210 grain XTP that says they're coming out at 1545 feet per second. So 10 grains, we can live with that. Half an inch barrels, we can live with that. And we're going to do some chronograph testing, do some meat target testing, see what kind of results we get. So let's get set up. We've got the chronograph set up for the 44 Magnum 200 grain XTP Hornady custom rounds. It's going to tell us the average of the feet per second when we're done, and it's going to give us the kinetic energy that we'll figure out the average of. So here we go. Those are hot. 1561.4. The kinetic energy, it says, is 1082.6. One, five, seven, seven. And the kinetic energy is 1105.4. One, one, five, six, four. And the KE, one, zero, 86.5. 1559 and KE again is 1079.8. 1588. Point eight. And kinetic energy is 1120.9. All right, so we're going to crunch the numbers on that, get the 44, or correction, the 41 Magnum set up, and we'll be back in a minute. We have the 41 Magnum now loaded up. Remember, this is a six and a half inch barrel Ruger Blackhawk. We got the Hornady Custom 41 Mag 210 grain XTP. So 10 grains heavier, half an inch barrel longer and we're gonna do some chronograph work. One, three, zero, one point four, and the kinetic energy is seven, eight, nine point six. One, three, two, four point one, eight, one, seven point three. One three zero six point one seven nine five point four one three one six point seven eight zero eight point three for the kinetic energy. One three zero one point six and seven eighty nine point eight. All right, we're going to go crunch the numbers and we'll draw them up on the fancy board like we do and we'll get back.
All right, welcome back. We got our meat target set up. So for those who haven't seen it before, the meat target is two layers of t-shirt material on the front, backed up by pork steak pectorals, pork ribs, oranges for lung tissue, pork ribs on the back, two more layers of t-shirt on the back, and then underneath the t-shirt is leather couch skin for skin. All of it backed up and hopefully catching the bullets today, the high-tech fleece bullet stop. So we're gonna start off with the 44 Magnum, uh, the Smith & Wesson Model 20, 629 Classic. And it's gonna be the 200 grain XTP coming out at 1500 feet per second. So let me get back to the firing line and let's see how these rounds do. And we're shooting from seven yards today. Well, let's pause for just a minute. Let me get it set up. Range is cold. Nobody's on the firing line or nobody's there. Now I know why Paul would put the fleece the other way, help hold things up. All right, range is hot again. Let's shoot a couple more. Well, we're gonna just shoot it that way for now. All right, we fired four rounds. We're gonna take a pause, get it torn apart and see how we're doing. So where it hit pork steak pectorals just destroyed them. Where it hit the ribs, destroyed them. I uh, made a mistake slightly by putting my rounds too close together. So where it hit orange tissue, orange lung tissue, just absolutely pulverized it, okay? Went through the ribs on the back, broke the ribs. Okay? We re recovered two of the bullets perfectly mushroomed out on the first layer of fleece. Two other bullets we recovered about the 16th to 20th layer of fleece. Let me try to get these in frame closer on the camera and I will, and then you'll get a close up look of them. So these two were buried deep in the fleece. These two were on the first layer and you can see it took a lot of stuff with it, but look at that mushroom. So I am highly impressed with the mushroom that we got on these bullets and the penetration and the damage, but I wouldn't expect much less out of a 200 grain, 1500 feet per plus per second, uh, 44 Magnum. So we'll get the meat target reset. We'll shoot it with a 41 Magnum and compare the results. All right, now we have our Ruger Blackhawk, six and a half inch barrel, 41 Magnum, loaded up with our Hornady Custom 41 Remington Magnum, 210 grain F or X, TP projectiles. See how we can do. We're going to shoot four rounds. Well, I was trying to spread them out a little bit, but let's go and see what we got. We have the meat target pulled apart. We recovered two rounds that I shot about in the middle of the meat target. The other two went a little high and we believe went through all the way through the fleece. Now I dropped one on the ground, but I'll show you, they're both almost the same. So they mushroomed out, not as well as the 44 Magnums. They, um, so this is what we got right here. All right, so they mushroomed out. Uh, they went through to about the 15th or so layer of fleece. And uh, the other one that I just dropped on the ground looks just like it. Let's go back and look at the uh, ribs and some of the orange tissue. So we know from just the rough chronograph results earlier that 
we aren't getting the speed velocity, foot pounds of energy out of the 41 that we get out of the 44. That being said, it pulverized the long, uh, orange lung tissue where it hit it. It went through the t-shirt, it went through the leather. Uh, so these were, and where it hit the ribs on the back, it pulverized the ribs on the back. I mean, you, look at that. So, I mean, <laughs> 41 Magnum's not a slouch either. It's a very good, if you still have one, you know, it's a good caliber if you like that. And it doesn't give you the recoil that the 44 Magnum does. Um, so that's where we are right this minute with the meat target. We're gonna get this all cleaned up. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, history of the 41 Magnum in our wrap up. And we'll see you here in just a minute. All right, welcome back out to the range. We ran out of daylight to finish up this little project we're working on. So we have compared the 41 Magnum to the 44 Magnum, both into the meat target and bullets and all across the chronograph. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today, I want to throw into the mix a 10 millimeter so that those more familiar with the 10 millimeter cartridge can get a comparison to where 44 and 41 and 10 millimeter all range together. So we're gonna do that with the most fair comparison that we can get for the firearms that we have today. And today's ammunition is the Spear Gold Dot Personal Protection 10 millimeter, 200 grain. It says GD hollow point. So that must be gold dot hollow point. We're gonna shoot it out of Saul's Fusion Firearms 1911 Grand Sport XL. It's a 15 round capacity fiber optic front sight, single action obviously, with a six inch barrel. So remember the Smith & Wesson model 629 had a six inch barrel and the Ruger Blackhawk has a six and a half inch barrel. So this should give us some sort of fair comparison. Now, before you think that we're all rich and we have a ton of super expensive firearms, Saul is a very successful businessman and he likes high quality firearms and equipment. So that's why. Now, let's put this down, get my ears on, shoot across the chronograph and see what we get. One zero nine zero point two. One zero eight five point five. One zero eight five point five. One zero seven four point eight. So let me go crunch the numbers, get them written down on the whiteboard, and we'll come back to you. Welcome back. 44 Remington Magnum had a 200 grain projectile with an average 1,570 and a foot pounds average of 1,095 foot pounds, okay? 44 Remington Magnum, 210 grain projectile out of the Ruger Blackhawk six and a half inch barrel gave us an average of 1,310 feet per second with an average foot pounds at the muzzle of 799. The 10 millimeter with a 200 grain projectile, six inch barrel out of the fusion, gave us an average of 1,089 feet per second at the muzzle and 217.75 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. The numbers are what they are. Obviously the 44 Remington Magnum is more powerful than the 41, that wasn't ever in dispute. People wanted to see where the 41 compares to the 44. This is fair in that the barrel lengths were all relatively the same and that in the grains of the projectiles were relatively the same. Keep in mind, these two were the same style and same brand of projectile. This one's not, it's the ammo we had today that is the 200 grain. So for those that are looking at the 10 millimeter or want to know where it lies within 44 Magnum, there you go. So we'll get this put away, we'll do a little bit of a wrap up. Now, before we get into the results and a little bit of wrap up, a little bit of history lesson. Now keep in mind, I'm old and I've been working a few years in law enforcement and the 41 Magnum came out before my time, but I have 
seen and know a little bit about its history and how we got here. So the 41 Magnum was developed by Remington and Smith and Wesson as an intermediary between 357 slash 38 Special and 44 Magnum for law enforcement. They thought that law enforcement needed a bigger diameter bullet than the 357. They needed to put people down quicker than the 38 Special can do. And they needed, not their term at the time, but barrier penetration, windshield, glass, car doors, etc. So they came up with 41 Remington Magnum. Now it is a good round, but they advertised it as less recoil, quicker shots, etc., than the 44 Remington Magnum, and able to penetrate barriers and other things easier or better than the 38 Special. They never really mentioned 357. So they came up with a special uh, 44, correction, 41 Remington Magnum urban load for law enforcement. It was a big, heavy bullet. Keep in mind, there were no hollow points at the time. The standard load out of a 38 was 158 grain lead round nose bullet. Almost all projectiles out there were just lead projectiles. The 357 shot a very similar load, of course, hotter than the 38 Special, but a lead round nose bullet. So the urban load was a semi wad cutter type load in a 200 grain, roughly, I don't have the data right in front of me, but in a heavier, bigger bullet. And it was advertised as stopping the threat right now and better windshield glass penetration and so on. But it never caught on to law enforcement. And the reason was is that the guns were the same size as the 44 Magnum guns. The felt recoil was very similar to the 44 Magnum. So you didn't get anything by going down. If you were a 44 Magnum carrying law enforcement officer, you didn't gain anything by going down. And if you were not liking your 38 or your 357, the guns at the time were really heavy and big, and if you were going to carry a big, heavy 44 mag frame firearm with almost the same recoil, you might as well have carried the 44 mag. So for those that were looking to move up from 38 357, there was no reason to stop in the middle. Might as well go all the way up. So it never caught on. And a few people, and those that like it, love it. And a few people got it for hunting and so on. And it's been around a long time. You can still get ammunition for it. It's a good caliber. Don't run out and replace your 41 Magnum with a 44 Magnum just because. Now, 44 Magnum is more popular. You can find rounds on the shelf more in different loadings. 41 Magnum is a little harder to find the rounds and there's not as many loadings. But it's still a really good caliber, a really good round. Just not what it was designed for way back in the mid 60s. Now, compare that to, and why do we throw the 10 millimeter in here? Anybody that's gotten into firearms in the last 20 years probably has bypassed the revolver days, unless they really wanted to, and they've gone to semi-automatic handguns. Keep in mind the United States military has been shooting semi-automatic, well, the modern uh, M9 since the mid 80s. So anybody in the last 20, 30, I guess almost 40 years, has been shooting a nine millimeter with a lot of rounds in the magazine, semi-automatic handgun. So that's what they know. So people are moving to and still staying with the semi-automatic handguns. Now they love the 10 millimeter if they're going out in the woods because they don't know anything about 41s and 44s. It's never been in their wheelhouse. They like the 15 rounds in the magazine. They like the simplicity of the reload. They like, in this case, a six inch barrel. And now we're seeing a resurgence in popularity in the 10 millimeter because it's probably the most common, biggest caliber you're gonna get in the semi-auto platform. Yes, I know there are a lot of other semi-autos out there shooting bigger rounds, Desert Eagles, etc. But a lot of people are making the double stacked 15 round capacity or more 10 millimeters right now, especially in the 2011 platform, 1911 platform area. So that's why I wanted to throw this in here for those that are looking at one of these 
and want this capacity and so on and where it fits in the into that it's not a 41 magnum it's not a 44 magnum but it does give you 15 plus rounds in the magazine it gives you a lot of quick reload and so it fills that role pretty damn well why do we do this in the first place well we had a lot of people asking where the 41 magnum fit into and compared to the 41 magnum so hopefully we've answered those questions today Keep in mind that if you have a 41 Magnum, don't run out and get a 44 or something else just because. It will do you very well. It is not a slouch of a caliber. None of these are really. But if you're looking at buying a new handgun, especially for the woods, especially for big animals, then I would look at 41, 44 Magnum, sorry, or something a little bit more powerful, 454 Casul, 500 Smith & Wesson, but those are in a big price point and usually are five rounds versus six rounds or 15 plus one rounds. So hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully we answered the question to those that were asking that question is where 41 Magnum sits. And I want you to remember, get out, train with your equipment, practice, know its capabilities and your capabilities so you can always be the best prepared for the worst case scenario.